Hi, we are the Drs. Bjorkman, a physician couple going through pregnancy now for the second time. And this week, we are going to share with you what we are putting in our hospital bags when we go to the hospital to have sweet baby number two. Yeah, so after years of catching babies, yep. years of taking care of babies in the newborn nursery, and having done this once before, yeah. we're gonna share exactly what we're taking, what we're not taking, to hopefully help you as you're getting ready to go and have your own sweet baby. Yes, if this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah, I'm a board certified OBGYN, currently in the third trimester of pregnancy. Yep, I'm Kurt, I'm a board certified pediatrician. And we, we are, are the, the Doctors Dr. Bjorkman. Welcome back. As many of you know, I am an OBGYN and I've been delivering babies for years. And I'm a pediatrician. I've been taking care of babies in the newborn nursery for years as well. And so this week we're actually taking all of that combined career experience and the fact that we've done this once before to sit down and pack our bag again for baby number two. Yes, so we are gonna tell you all the essential things that you need to pack in your hospital bag so you are prepared for labor and birth and postpartum, as well as cover some of those things you don't need. I've seen lots of patients show up to L&D looking like they're ready to be there for a month, and we want to help you know just the essentials, what you need, what you don't need, and we're gonna cover that now. Also, packing lists, mom, dad, baby, are in the show notes below. All right, so let's talk about the essential things that you are going to want to pack in your hospital bag. When I think about the whole bag situation, I think about kind of dividing it into three. Bag for mom, bag for dad, bag for baby, okay? Uh, so let's start with bag for mom. Um, when I think about getting started. I think about when I get to the hospital, what am I gonna want? So I'm either getting to the hospital in labor, maybe I'm showing up for an induction, maybe I'm showing up for a scheduled C-section, but I know that I want to be comfy. And so one of the things I bring <laughs> that's maybe a little extra is a pillow from home. Want my own pillow. Remember that hospitals are not hotels. Um, so pillows are pretty thin and covered in plastic. Um, sheets can be not super comfy. So I really like to have a pillow. And if I get a chance to rest or take a nap, I just want my pillow from home. And that brings me joy. So things in for us, for mom um, or birthing person, when you're in labor, I kind of labor is like a very long, long workout. Um, it can be very active. You're doing a lot of working, walking, switching positions, different things. And so I really like a sports, some kind of bra, um, supportive bra. Um, and I like a nursing bra so that after you have baby, it is clipped down, um, easy access to get to those boobs once baby's born. But so I definitely have a nursing bra packed. Um, that is supportive. This is, I really like the Auden ones from Target. Um, and so I have that packed. In terms of clothes mom's gonna wear, generally they switch you, put you in a hospital gown as soon as you get checked into labor and delivery because they want you to be easy access, to be able to get an IV. It's nice to be open in the back in case you get an epidural or different things there. And so they will give you a nice hospital gown Right, usually when you get there. I have seen some mamas and patients who f find a cute um, hospital gown that are pretty and you know, whatever. Labor birth is also pretty messy. And so if you get blood on it, if they break your water and it gets soaking wet, all these different body fluids that may happen during labor, um, I wasn't excited about getting on some cute, fancy hospital gown that I bought. Um, and so it's something, if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. I find those blue and white hospital gowns totally fine. And then if I need a new one, they just bring me a new one right away. Other things I think about for walking around during the hospital, um, during labor are a pair of shoes. I like a pair that you can wear in the shower um, just for postpartum. Um, that way you don't necessarily have to be barefoot. Something waterproof is really, really great. Other things that you're gonna wanna put in your hospital bag is kinda a little toiletries kit or a makeup kit. Um, things, you know, essentials that you're gonna want in that are 
toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, hairbrush, chapstick, nail clippers. Um, these are things that I have in mind. Some extra hair ties, a claw clip. Um, in the other half, taking you taking a little bit of makeup. I'm not a big makeup wearer, um, but sometimes putting on some eyeliner or mascara and a little blush just makes me feel like a new person and look a little less like a zombie. And I don't really wanna crop my head out of every picture <laughs> with the new baby. Um, and so did throw some makeup in. You may wanna sh throw in sh some shampoo and conditioner. The hospital usually has some generic stuff that works just fine, um, but if you are picky about your hair shampoo, something to consider throwing in. I'm a dry shampoo kind of gal, um, and so I have a can of dry shampoo in my bag ready to go. The next thing I think about is, okay, we made it through labor and delivery. We, you know, now we're postpartum. We are hanging out in the hospital for, you know, 24 hours to maybe three or four days if you have a C-section. What do you be, wanna be lounging around the hospital in? And so things <laughs> that I remember from being postpartum are just big, comfy, easy access things, meaning easy access for baby to get to boob, easy access for you to be getting up and getting out of bed and going to the bathroom, things like that. So things I, I'm taking with me are a robe. Um, again, just a simple kind of cotton robe that I can put on, wear around the hospital so that I can have something on nurses, doctors, anesthesiologists, um, lactation consultant. People are constantly coming in and out of your room and depending on you know your level of comfort with modesty and or different things of how much you want covered, it's nice to have a robe or something that you can just have on and be covered up pretty quickly. Um, other things, again, a nursing bra or two, you may not want anything on your breasts at all. I remember I had my robe and that was it. The nips were so sore and tender the first time, I just really couldn't have anything on them at all. So see how you feel. Um, other things for kind of lounging around the hospital, things I loved postpartum with baby number one were nursing camisoles. Um, so it's just a camisole that has the drop down, the easy access snaps. Um, and I liked this postpartum because it has some belly coverage. So you can kind of be sitting there in your nursing, just having this on. And then you also have some belly coverage. Um, which I really appreciated uh, postpartum. And so I have two nursing camis packed. I have a big pair of sweatpants, um, some joggers, a pair of gray sweatpants, things that are super comfy. Remember, you're gonna be wearing some mesh undies with a giant pad, so you wanna have room um, in your pants for extra things, because you're gonna be putting ice pads on. You've got these lovely mesh undies. Such a glamorous time. Um, postpartum is so weird. You kind of never feel more wrecked or <laughs> like a disaster, but also totally feel like a warrior who just gave birth to this tiny perfect human. So it's a huge mix of emotions. You just wanna be sure that you can be comfortable and feel like you have the things you need when you're at the hospital. So those are kind of the, I mean, that's it. Um, the other thing you need is something to wear home because you, you know, you gotta leave the hospital eventually. Again, I have a big pair of sweatpants and a big sweater probably that I will wear and that's it. I have a North Face zip up that in all reality is probably I'll wear my North Face and my gray sweatpants and out we will go. The one update that I would have made this hospital bag packing from the first time I went is nipple care, okay? Um, and I kind of said, you know, I had a hard time. The nips were so sore first time around. Um, the thing that I found saved me that really helped recover my nipples was silverettes. Um, there's these silver nipple covers. And basically what you do is 
you have these on your nipples anytime the baby isn't nursing for those first couple weeks, and it really helps with moist wound healing. So this is the one thing that I'm adding to my hospital bag that I did not have the first time. The first time I tried a bunch of different nipple creams, lanolin, different, they just didn't work. I felt they were really greasy. I like the robe I had for baby number one has like nipple grease stains there right in the chest. Um, and I just loved my silverettes and really felt like they helped me heal and saved my nipples um, and our breastfeeding relationship there at the beginning. So the silverettes are going in the bag and coming with us. Things that you absolutely don't need. <laughs> regular underwear, you know, you have your pair that you wear in, but if they break your water, if you have any bleeding postpartum, you're gonna want the big mesh undies to fit those pads in. Um, you really don't need underwear, regular bras, you're not gonna need. Um, you do not need to take any pads. You don't need to take any nipple creams. Again, they're gonna have that unless it's something you love. Um, Perry bottles they have they often have the ice pads at the hospital. Um, and so all of that kind of perineal care, nipple care, breastfeeding supplies, potentially formula for baby if you need it. In the United States, they have most of these things for you at the hospital, so you don't have to worry about packing that. Just the things that you need for you in your suitcase, save that extra space for your stuff. So when it comes to bag for partner or dad, the biggest thing to think about that I thought about the first time that I'm thinking about again as I'm getting ready for us to go in ourselves is what do I need to be really supportive? Um, and part of that means what do I need to make sure that I'm gonna be a happy human being who's ready to be helpful and then also what are the things that I'm gonna need to just help support the team while we're there? Um, so in terms of like things for me, really just an outfit like something comfy, whether it's like some athleisure wear, whatever you're comfortable in, whether it's a flannel or something else, um, pair of joggers, pair of sweatpants, something like that. Um, got that packed in my bag, set to go. What am I gonna be wearing during the labor process? What am I gonna be wearing in that time after birth as well? Right, you're thinking about kind of the balance between leading up to birth and then also however long you need to be in the hospital until you're going home. For us, we were in the hospital, we were so lucky for 36 hours total the first time. That's probably the shortest amount of time you could be in the hospital. And so if you're someone who like feels like, hey, I need a new pair of underwear every day, absolutely. And it's a great thing to pack extras of. Like you might get sweaty, the birth process is hot. Um, it just happens. Um, then other things like during the time between arrival and birth and then after delivery, what kind of other things you need, whether it be just to pass the time, entertainment, whatever. Um, I brought a laptop last time, um, didn't actually touch it at all, but the thought was, hey, if the induction process was along, or if we end up needing to spend a couple extra days, it'd be great to watch a movie on, or if I needed to do any work at all, anything like that, communicating with family, that that would be nice to have. Um, the other thing that I thought was great um, the first time was a, wireless speaker. Um, we just had music on in the delivery room. It was so nice to just like have some background music for us to like whether we were passing the time and then even like I like remember the song that was playing when my little girl was born and um, Jason Derulo will now always have a special place in our heart. Um, absolutely like make a birth playlist for that too. Like we did that my own fault. I put that song on. Anyway, so it goes. Um, other things is just thinking about like how are you going to document something that like we something we brought the first time that I didn't use but might use um, just a, a camera stand something to take pictures with I know we had packed our big camera the first time didn't touch it we took pictures with our phone it was easy it was smaller again less is probably more um, and then the last piece for electronics um, is chargers um, get a phone charger. Ideally, if you can, get one with an insanely long cable um, because invariably you'll be in a room where the bed is far away from the outlet and your partner is going to want to be able to have their phone charging while they're laying in bed. So your job as partner is to make sure they can charge their phone where they're sitting. So whether it's that um, or we also just happen to like love these little portable charger bricks um, have been great for us. And then the final and maybe most important part as partner is snacks. 
Okay. Um, again, for me, like if I'm hungry, I get hangry. So I want to be happy and helpful. So snacks for me. Um, and then also snacks for partner, right? Partner. Now the key thing there is when they are in the active like labor process, they're going to be told they can't eat. Um, and that's just in case they needed to go for an urgent emergency section surgery. Um, any food in the belly could be potentially dangerous, but I will tell you having food for immediately after that baby comes was a godsend to us in the first, the first time through. Actually, like we ended up getting, <laughs> we ordered a pizza while like Sarah was in active labor, which was maybe a little cruel in that like, we were eating pizza and she was couldn't eat it, but it meant like immediately after baby came, there was food, she was hungry, she was ready to eat. And so whatever it may be to have food available for that. And then also like hospital food is probably available. That worked out great for us. We didn't pack a whole lot of snacks. Um, you know, Sarah loves Dove chocolates. I have some of those packed. Um, a great granola bar, protein bar, beef jerky, something like that, something easy. Um, don't go too extravagant. Um, but just making sure that you're thinking about food for yourself and then food for your partner after baby comes. So when it comes to all of the packing stuff as partner, in my mind, I'm also realizing that there's gonna come a time where I'm gonna be carrying everything out myself. Um, if I can make it in one trip, awesome. And so what it comes down to is kind of a carry on size piece of things for mom, um, maybe a small backpack or small bag for myself and a small bag for baby. And then of course the car seat, um, things that I can do in one trip easily. And so really I don't need much. Um, mom just needs a little bit, baby just needs a little bit. And so definitely less is more. And that's something I appreciated the first time. And then even whittling down a little bit more for time number two. All right, so when we are thinking about baby's bag, generally it's, we found it easy to just have, you're gonna need a diaper bag um, to carry things around for baby in the coming weeks and months. And so we said, hey, let's just pack the things we need for baby in the diaper bag we are going to use. We have this, we got handed down a, this land diaper bag um, for our first kiddo, thought it worked great. Found the same thing for this next one. It's on Amazon. It's 20 bucks. It's not anything fancy. And we can fancy. have that link for you too. Yep, but it has lots of pockets, holds everything you need. So in diaper bag for baby, you don't really need much. Again, the hospital, at least in the United States, has many, many, most all of the things that you are gonna need to take care of that sweet babe once they're first born. So yep. they have diapers and wipes and butt creams pacifiers, little baby hats, swaddles, little onesies, different things, clothes you might need for them while they're there. They have all of those essentials. And so really, if you did not bring a single thing for baby, you would be okay. Um, a lot of the things that we're thinking about in the diaper bag are for that ride home, <laughs> leaving the hospital and going home, um, and, and just like sweet things you might want for a photo or things for that. So the one essential thing you need in your diaper bag is an outfit for baby to go home in, which you really could leave them in hospital things, but you know, we picked one. Um, you want something with legs, okay? I love to put the little newborns in the bags that tie at the bottom, mm -hmm. but that is not conducive to buckling them safely into a car seat. Mm -hmm. And so um, newborn outfits we love are kind of just these zippered onesies with the feet. Um, keyword there being zippers. Zippers, zippers. zippers. Buttons are awful the snaps. snaps. You don't do that to yourself. Zippers are awesome. Um, and so a little, one little outfit um, for baby to go home in. You may, you know, you don't need it, but you may want one other cute outfit for a photo at the hospital. Um, totally fine. They're so small, they don't take up very much room. <laughs> um, but I originally had like four in here. <laughs> Kurt told me I needed to. Tone it down a little bit. But in all honesty, you should yeah. maybe have a backup because invariably there may be a blowout on totally. the way home. And so having two or three outfits, kind of thinking about that home going outfit may need to be two or three, depending on how long your ride is. Valid. It's better to plan ahead. Kind and of. They're, li they're little. So, you know, a couple little, a bag, a zip up, um, you'll be all set. Yeah. Um, it's really all you need. Um, thinking about that car ride home though. Yes. 
in anticipation of maybe needing to do a diaper change. The other thing that we have on our very short list for baby is having a little changing pad, mm -hmm. um, another like just simple something, a space that you can put baby on to change to keep everything else clean and to keep baby clean too. Yeah. Invariably plan ahead, it's likely gonna happen for right. you. Right. Um, and then this brings us to the most important thing to bring to baby, the thing you must bring, cannot go home without it being a car seat. Um, part of safe discharge is having a, a car seat for baby mm -hmm. to go home in, um, get it installed early so that it's ready. We have ours in our vehicle already, um, getting our toddler ready to be around a new baby brother. Yes, things that are in this diaper bag that are not essential, that just happen to be there because we have a baby. Um, a pack of wipes, um, a couple pacifiers, some desitin, um, purple desitin butt cream, um, and some aquaphor, and a burp rag. That's it, yeah. that's it. So if we have to stuff anything else in there, there's some extra room. We hope by going through our list again the second time, it's helpful to you to make sure you've got everything you need and hopefully not a lot of things you don't. Right. Of course, like no one knows you better than you and so exactly. use that to decide kind of how what many extra you things need? you're gonna pack. Yes. Um, and probably as you go on to baby two, three, four, five, et cetera, you're gonna bring less and less, <laughs> totally. I imagine, the next yes. time um, we're bringing a little bit less this time than we did the first. Yes, so wishing you all the best and such a fun time to be getting things ready to go to the hospital for your baby. If you guys have any things that you love or you thought were essential that you wanted to have at the hospital with you, please leave that below to share with the other moms and parents who are gonna be getting their bags ready. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, we will plan to see you all next week. Bye guys. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.